Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. Today I am going to be reviewing Land Art, Creating Artworks in and with the Landscape by James Brunt. So this is what the cover looks like. This is a fantastic, super enjoyable book. And as you can see by all my stickies, I have a lot of pictures to show you. So to start with, I have no idea how this book ended up on my to read list, but I came across it somewhere and I decided to put it on my to read list and I got it from my library. And I am so glad I did. And you need to get a, your hands on a copy of this book as well, because this is, in my opinion, phenomenal. So James Brunt is, I believe, a UK based artist who does a lot of work in nature trying to use natural things from the environment. So he doesn't go in and put a clay sculpture in the woods, but instead he's trying to build art from things that are already found in art. And before we get started, I want to say that he does have a very strict code of conduct to make sure that he's not disrupting the environment or disrupting it as little as possible that he does lay out. So if you're concerned about that, I want to um, get ahead of that right now and say that he does have a strict code of conduct about how he does his work. But to get you started, as you can see, like here's a picture of leaves. One of his code of conducts is he does not pick from living like plants. So these are not picked from the trees. He finds things on the ground and he builds art. And he has a couple key formats that he uses to build art, but this is a style of what he is doing. So I'll just get started and show you these are stones built into spirals, the kind of art in landscape that he is doing. The idea is that he's building art with these natural features and he is designing them so they will eventually be returned to nature. So he doesn't want any of these to last long. They're a temporary exhibit that showcase nature. Here's one with sticks. You can see there's some definite themes emerging that he builds. So the beginning of this book, he goes over things like an introduction to him. He talks about himself, how he got into this, of course his dog, and he also discusses the centrality of joy in his process. He just is trying to have fun. He talks a lot about the importance of play to him and how many of us as adults lose this important feature. We have a lot of it as kids, but we lose it as an adult and he thinks it's important to tap into that creative playful side as an adult, which is what he's doing professionally full-time and having a blast. And he discusses his code of conduct so that people don't feel like he's just going out and destroying nature or doing this in areas where there's going to be a severe environmental impact. He does have a code of conduct, which is discussed on this page to explain how he's doing um, the most he can to not disturb animals. And after reading this, I'm, I'm very convinced that he's doing quite well. Uh, he's probably doing more than those of us who don't make art in nature do for nature anyways. So he does have a strict code of conduct and he then discusses very briefly the things he uses to work with, a camera and occasionally something to help him make circles. That's his entire kit. And then we get right into the fantastic art. So the author uses, he's calling them invitations to play because he wants you to come along with you and go into the art. But these invitations to play are basic ways that he builds things and as you can see the first one is the spiral which comes up again and again in his work and he does a lot of his work in a local woods next to his house the next one is repetitions we have these fantastic leaves look at this here repetitions is his second invitation to play so a set his second format that he has We're getting to three natural frames where he talks about using the natural environment to frame your work. And he has some really interesting um, pieces. He also shows how you do it. So here we have a picture showing how he does it. He has some very interesting pieces uh, where he does different pieces of art at the same location using the same framing. So here we see him using this tree as a frame for his work. So he talks about natural frames as like format number three. Here they are. Here are the um, so you have the same tree, but with different art, you may want to pause so that you have time to look, or better yet, pick up your own copy of this book. So it talks about, yeah, these roots, framing, and the importance of framing, and there's a fourth form of play, ah, natural mandelas, is that how you say them? this one here and he explains in step-by-step -step instructions how he does them so labeled instructions here 
So he discusses how he goes into schools, he has engagements, he has collaborations, but I really found in this book that the best works that he did was this time that he called his year at Waleda. I hope I'm saying that correctly, W-E-L-E-D-A. The way I understand it, it was like a one year paid place where he just went to this farm and he got to create art. And I think his best work comes out of it. So I just wanna show you some of the fantastic art that spoke to me in this book. Spoke to me seems very formal, but. Here's some of the fantastic pieces that he puts together. Really the art is the important part. Look at that one. It's just so cool. At least to me. Now, not all of these pieces took place at the Waleda place, but a lot of it did. These are on the top of tree trunks, like a tree trunk that is like standing but there's no tree attached so the tree part has fallen off i took the most roundabout way to explain it i really like this one down here we also have this really cool one i like this one these are all natural natural things found in the environment this one and this one, he shows a step-by-step -step of his process while creating it. I really liked this one. This one, I like the ice. I'm from a cold area. Well, I don't know cold. We, ha we have all four seasons, but we do have uh, quite a bit of winter as well. So I like, I feel like a natural affinity to ice. So I really like this one that he created. A lot of his pictures don't have snow, so I don't know if the UK just gets less snow than where I live, and that's why, or he doesn't do as much creating. And these. So after seeing all of these pieces of work, and really the text doesn't take too long to read, you're just gonna spend the most time looking at all of these pictures, looking at all the fantastic pieces of art that the uh, um, author James Brunt has created. And I like the fact that these are all temporary. They're designed to retreat back into nature and to retreat back into nature quite quickly. I like that he talks about the importance of enjoying the process while creating your work. It's not just something to get done or something that you need to force. It's supposed to be an enjoyable process. And he opens the process up to the reader to explore this if this is something they're interested in doing as well. Something else that wasn't really the point of this book but that got me thinking was the art that he did at that year at Waleda place where he got to just go live on a farm basically and create art in nature and take pictures. I found that most of the, most of the pieces of art that I tabbed in here as interesting came from his year at that location, which just got me thinking like, first of all, if that's what comes out of artist residencies and maybe we should fund more of them, but how giving someone the freedom and being like, you're not worrying about paying your bills or anything. At least I assume that was part of the deal, like a, a place to live and a stipend. And he just got to pursue something that he wanted to become good at. How much it would be interesting to see if like, because all of us have things that we want to get better at doing. If we were given like a year or six months where it's kind of like an artist residency, but doesn't have to be for art, where you can just explore an idea to its fullest that you want to get better at, how how far we could all do or what we could produce. Because again, I think his best works, at least in this book, came from that year where he was just free to kind of do whatever he wants. And I wonder what could come out of us if all of us were given that opportunity. Which, it, that makes me sound like I'm complaining that he got that opportunity. But I thought it was just interesting. I'm like, wow, his best work seemed to come from this time. I wonder how much all of us could accomplish if we were given space like that to explore one topic or one area where we want to improve or just do for a whole year. This book is one that you're going to want to return to again and again. I can say that right away. So this is a library book for me, but it's one that I'm like, hmm, I might want to pick up a, a secondhand copy of just for myself because the art is fantastic. So I showed you my favorite pictures, but you really cannot open this book without seeing fantastic art. I mean, it just pops off the page. There's no bad pictures. There's no bad pages. All of it is just so, so, so interesting. And I think not only would it be a great book to get for yourself, if you have someone in your life who loves art, this could be a fantastic gift. This actually reminded me of another book that I read that I recommend you check out my review of as well called Grain of Sand. And it was very different medium. I feel like so much is different, but at the same time, so much is the same. That photographer would take sand and photograph it under a microscope to get all these fantastic pictures. And it was so fun to see. And for some reason, those two even though one of them is using sand under a microscope and uh, this one is using natural 
things in nature to build these temporary art pieces both felt like somehow connected and I haven't quite put together why my brain made that connection, but they're both fantastic and I recommend both of those books. So if you liked this one, then go check out my review of Grain of Sand as well. This was an easy five star for me. This was absolutely fantastic. Again, no idea how it landed on my to read list, but I'm glad it did. I'm glad I gave it a read and I highly, highly recommend that you check it out because I don't think you will be disappointed. If you have any thoughts or comments on land art that you want to share, please leave it in the comment section down below. I love to receive all of your comments. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.